seconds add any other drills you would like uh, and then we're going to burn into our 30 second stuff our boxing stuff uh i know for for me i'm mean, usually I just like nice relaxing clear your mind just allow your body to relax and breathe out at the end learn to control your breath learn to control tension in your body and relax. This is the same kind of thing you want to be able to do in a fight. 
Work on good breath. And nice and slow. All right. That's a good time to really just let yourself clear your mind a little bit. We spend a lot of time, I know guys that we've been spending a lot more time on the idea of clearing your mind. And, uh, uh, and there's reasons behind that. And I think we're seeing good benefit. I think a lot of people are learning how to control emotion much better and things like this. This is part of that. Being able to let things just roll off you, right? That's, that's part of in a fight. Somebody, somebody touches you and you think, oh, they just hit me. That's enough time, you know, or they just touched me. Was that good? Wasn't that good? That's enough time for them to touch you a second time. The idea being somebody hits you, you just like, okay, they touched me and you finish what you're doing. You back out. You're like, oh no, that last touch was good. But find that safety before you start thinking about stuff. How many times have you been struck after they just touch you? They kick the thought and then they snap on you again and you're done. It's like, you don't know. It doesn't matter if that first one's good or bad. In fact, your opponent may actually be using that. I use it all the time. I'll be like, bang, hit you on the arm. There's no power in that. I just want you to think about that arm, right? Because now you're thinking about that arm. I'll be like, oh, you really just, bang, bang. And that creates an opportunity. So, all right, everybody ready to do some work? Get a little sweating in. All right, remember we're gonna start this off with our flat foot squats. Get ready, because you have after hit the button again. Five, four, three, two, one, and squats. Remember at five seconds, oh, probably the bottom. Yeah. At five seconds, you will uh, hear a beep, and then the bell is what? Well, I attempted to turn off the five minute or five oh, second really? beep thing. We'll see if it worked. Okay. So far, it's not making any noise, so. You turn the volume up there? Yeah. Good, no five seconds. So the bell is the bell. This squat jumps. In three, two, one. Go. Round two. Think about them toes. And them toes. Five seconds left. Get a couple more in. And good. Next is lunges. Ready to go. Round three. In and out. Keep our sideways squat touch things. Ready, go. Round four. I say it. Push it. That skaters. Two, one, and go. Round five.
10 seconds. Push it a little faster. Get that final 10 seconds in. Almost done. Push on toes. Last one is high knees. Run it or march it, whatever works for you. Ready, ready, go. Round six, final. Everybody'd love a second round, wouldn't you? Sure, why not? <laughs> I have to say, though, uh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So, so I look like I'll be able to push it a little farther next time. <laughs> oh no, we still have to get the introduction to get a different stuff. Yeah, we didn't get Davey's music going yet. Yeah. We'll have to kick some of that up. Everybody get their little wrist, wrist bandanas and head strap and kick up some 80s music and go. Yeah, we already had the leg warmer, so we're good. We have to get the neon colors, though. And if you guys remember seeing Bess's stuff, yeah, they, there's our goal. So, which footwork are we doing today? Quick. Quick feet? Yep. Do we have our little sheet of reference board? We do. We're going to grab our board. <laughs> Okay, I got my quick reference board. We're gonna do quick feet. Lots of quick today. Ooh. So, is everybody ready? Ready to get going? Yeah. You're gonna take your silences, yes. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with our first quick feed, which is our two foot run. Nice and easy. That's it. Don't worry about the ladder. Just take my back. Get good breath. Remember backwards. Our other foot. Start with the other foot. Exactly. 
Uh, what Cy was talking about a little bit on this is we've covered this one time. I used to cover it a lot. Is that allowing that butt? Not that I'm going to be standing like this, allowing the butt to do this, but allowing your whole back to sit into the void. So that way, all you're doing is you're falling back. You feel like you're falling back. Your same thing goes forward. Scrambling to catch you. And I'm finding I get too caught up trying not to trip on the ladder that the, the whole fall backwards thing just goes away. So I should practice this beside the ladder. Exactly. <laughs> so I want everybody to practice this once where you're feeling like you're doing a controlled fall backwards. You don't have to worry about your foot spacing. Right? Maybe don't do it on the ladder. Yeah, do it on the side of the ladder. And I'm going to show you why this works. So again, all you're doing is you're pretending you're sitting down in a seat that's not there. And it's small steps. Really small steps. You make big steps, you can't just do that fall. And it is difficult to do it for like the whole length of the ladder. I'm only making it about halfway before my balance gets away from me. So don't feel bad if you can only make it a handful of steps the first time. Like it's fine. <laughs> Okay. So that gives you that feel. So that control fall is important because a lot of times when you're falling away from somebody who's jumping you or who attacks you even. So if I fight inside and, and she attacks me, if I stick my butt out to do this, my shield drops into this angle. And I'm kind of stuck here still. So my sword shoulder is pointing at the ground compared to here I am, I fall back, my shield stays nice and high. And I can literally fall back as fast as she's going forward a lot of times to get good at it. <laughs> All right. So that's just the reason why we practice this drill backwards. It becomes really, really important to get to that place where you're not folding to go backwards. But that's also that's also all part of that flow. Here I am going forward, the stomach belt pushes out. Here I am going back, the same thing happens. So in our flow, we do that. Even in that figure eight, we're going backwards and forwards. We're changing that same field inside figure eight. Also, there's a big one for the rolling chair analogy. Imagine the little, just the stool on wheels. I am sitting down into it and just pushing back with my feet. My feet are actually like out here in front of me. Yeah. But the body's still straight. And, and in some cases, be careful when you say pushing out with your feet. You're not really what's happening is you're catching yourself. You're catching yourself with a ball and a foot on that back step. Yes. All right. All right, next one. All right, up next we're doing hopscotch. So that's this one. Jumping out, jumping in, all the way down. All right, let's run it, guys. Keep it nice and balanced. Try not to bob up and down too much. Yep. Focus is on moving forward in a flat line. Squat. Back foot. Everything just moves underneath you. Just think about moving your center in a straight, smooth line. Speed it up 
a whole bunch for once. For this one, I'm just taking a step forward, doing my shuffle across. We normally focus on keeping this one slow and balanced and getting that nice drop step motion in there, but we can speed this up quite a bit. So that's our focus today. Keep your center over your feet. But you should shift the center first. Three steps. Three steps. Let me try. I, I got to get it right. Step forward. Step across. As we speed this one up, it's very tempting to let our, our legs kind of pendulum side to side underneath us. So make sure as you're speeding it up, you still keep the focus on vertical body that's moving all the way side to side with you. But it's going to be a smaller sideways motion. You're not going to get as far off to the side. <laughs> Look, I've screwed up the first time through just myself, and I've been doing it for years now. <laughs> it has been literal years. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. Hmm? It's been literal years, but it still feels like we just started doing this yesterday. So, you know. So, naturally, the next step is going to be to go into that cross behind. So, almost exactly the same, but we're going to go ahead and instead of just shuffling across, let your foot cross behind. One step, cross and over. Keep your hip pointed forward, bend your knees a little bit, drop your hips a little bit. Very nice, William. Well, you get some big ass. Yeah. This should be a nice flowing exercise. You should just feel yourself flowing from one side or the other. Ready? Let's try. Do it nice and slow with it. Okay. <laughs> Here. Right. Now I gotta remember. <laughs> We're trying to always keep our center somewhere between our feet. If your center gets out past your feet, then potentially you're going to lose, you could lose balance. So you got to be very aware of the ground. Even though we're shifting our center from, from between our feet to, to maybe over top of one foot. Yes, that's it right there, Brian. <laughs> yeah, step back. Cross in front. Yeah, now you cross in front. Back, there you go. Push step back out of the way Yeah, do it slow, right? Same thing. There we are. Take a step back with it. Use the inside mover. Step back and then bring us across. Over forward. Yeah, and then foot front. Yeah, and back. Very valid point. They just reminded us when you're going backwards, the cross becomes in front. Right. 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 There you go, Todd. Yeah, it's like the yellow brick road type of deal. All right. How are they doing online? Uh, All right. I see. It's awesome that uh, Angus is doing it with Sword and Shield a little bit. So with them, very nice guys. Them make the ass. There you go. Keep that front foot pointed forward. When that crossing foot, as long as you point forward, you're going to keep your shoulder pointing forward. You won't have swinging on your on your shield. 
So if you have a sword and shield in this place, you don't want this scenario where you step back and your, your hip is pointed this way. I gotta get the camera on you. Okay, so okay. You, you don't want a scenario where here I am, I step, my point, I'm still pointed, but then as soon as this goes here, I'm pointed the wrong way. You turn your hips on there. Right, so you, you end up turning your hip because the front foot is turned. So the idea is here and I fall and I stay pointed at my opponent. So that way you're, you're always facing that appointment, the opponent, your defense and offense are coming from the same place all the time. All right. Next up, we're going to move into a four step, another primarily drop step move, but as we speed it up, the quick feet are a big part of it. So, our one, two, three, four. Nice and smooth, all the way across. Again, you can do this on the side of your ladder, just side to side. You can extend these. You can take their eight steps. Sometimes pause at the end of, of going sideways so that you know you're keeping your balance. If you end up penduluming and forcing yourself to, to take the next set of steps because you're about to fall, then you're not in control as much. If you want to do it more advanced, do two forward, one back. That's it, bend at that way, get in those legs. And Slide also, there we go. Keep it on the balls of your feet. Very good. And you're looking pretty good, but I am noticing in the middle, you kind of stand up a little bit and then settle back down into a squat. Okay. Like it's not huge, it's subtle, but you're definitely like a little bit taller in the middle. That looks a lot better. Yeah. Thank you. So this becomes very important in a fight again to stay with your opponent. The idea is if my opponent takes an outside step, I'm gonna cut that off. In fact, if I can take a bigger step, I'm gonna to get to the outside. So there, and I'll start the other way. <laughs> so if you start doing that, I start going, okay, next time. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just gonna get out of there. All right, moving on. Lateral, in, in, out, out. One of our quintessential quick feet. So, in, in, out, out. Quick as we can, all the way down. Body stays there. We don't, or the body stays with our, our feet. We don't have the body here and the feet like swinging out from under, which is really tempting. Don't do it. And try not to look down at the ladder. Keep your head forward. <laughs> Those things, the quicker it goes, the smaller it's going to be. So your forward backward might only be just the two inches across the line on the edge of your ladder. And that's okay. <laughs> Don't forget to do both the right and the left. And remember, you can do it on the other side of the ladder to push the feet. That's the way, Margarita. Very nice. I can see you like falling in, falling out, which is exactly, and you're staying on the balls of your feet, which is exactly what we want to see. 
Very good job. Right. Give people a second to finish this run because I still still see people going. Nice job, Angus. You're doing a nice job falling in and out as well. Thank you, Raj. And all right. Ready for the next one. Start forward in out. In, in, out, out. So we're gonna face it. We're gonna break down our hopscotch. Step out to the side and then step into the middle, all the way down. Get really big, sound like typewriter. And then remember to switch off leading the other foot. Inside ladder and lead with the foot going outside of the ladder. And don't forget to switch your stance. Go funny foot forward. Feeling better, then you can rejoin. It's no big deal. Otherwise, just watch for now. Try not to turn the, the foot sideways. Yeah, I should have done that more. Vim, are you feeling good? 
I'm not too bad. All right. quick feet today. Uh, we're going to break down the ladder, give these guys, we got a little less room in here today. I'm going to move around just a little bit so we give some fight. You guys are going to hear some fight noise, uh, but that's okay. We're going to talk next. Want everybody get some water. Stretch a little bit while you're getting water, if you don't mind. And then we're going to talk fakes a little bit today. We're going to talk tension in the fakes. We're going to talk about the details of a fake. Because what I have been seeing is People feel very confident, which is wonderful. But sometimes you get so confident that the only thing you know is I'm gonna do something and throw. You gotta, you gotta relax and, and take it to a point where you understand what's gonna happen before you throw. You should know what your opponent does before you throw. So we've been doing a lot of fakes with feet. Now we're gonna do fakes. I don't care where your sword is, which foot, whatever. We're gonna talk about tension and how to make sword fakes count as well. Uh, in the end, is those sword fakes, if they look exactly like your throws, will make your opponents think and those probes become really important. So we're gonna take five minutes and then we'll be back. I'm gonna move the camera around a little bit, give these guys some floor space. Well, we can see everybody the else. Go ahead and get your gear on. I kind of want you to, to play drums. Bum, 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 bum. I know it is like, and I got the stick. Here we are. Bum, 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 bum. While they're fighting, that would be bad. That would be awesome. <laughs> It'd be Penzik all over again, only at practice. Yeah. 
I don't know. They were playing the drums like that at golf wars during the battle. It was, I was watching and I'm like, oh, that is, I love, I've been in stuff like that where they're doing that in a battle. And it's just like, yeah. oh, it feels so good. You know, Penzik and golf are the only two places I've been where they do that. So golf wars, they did it this year. It was very cool. The drums on a battlefield. Yeah, they do that. Well, they've done it every time I've been there. I've only been a couple of times. All three, all three of them, all three times. Oh, okay. Well, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I wish we could do it at Kenzie. Drums and war, awesome. Are we finished with the ladder now? Can I just sit at my desk or should I move my chair away again? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Camera's there, person here. <laughs> Bim, someone wants to say hi. Oh, Omar. Hey, hi, I wanted to see you the most. Hell yeah. <laughs> Good on you. I saw you pop up in the last live stream that I saw. I'm just like, I got it. <laughs> well, I look forward to our next fight, hopefully, sometimes in the near future. Oh, uh, yeah. You keep training there and you're yeah, going to come back here. Be a Baroness War over in Illinois. Okay. I've got a kid coming, so it may be a while before I get to do a lot of events. Fair uh, enough. I'll be here. <laughs> Very cool. I don't know. Hey, uh, I'll see you around, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it. Get some fighting in. All right, we're just getting some target hits for people. They're going to walk through some of the striking drills. Um, and, and again, uh, you know, Germanicus and uh, gets the idea here. It's important that you go ahead and find when people don't, you know, if people have some things that are going on. Uh, and just can't get an armor, just getting them back to practice and be able to do pads, walking pads, strike drills, change up angles, learn how to strike while moving becomes a really important thing. Really good exercise when you're at practice. Everybody should at least try to get a pair of pads to practice and some foam sword so they can actually practice this. It's, uh, it pays off in, it pays off huge. So uh, it is definitely one of those places where I think uh, we don't do enough of it in the SCA and it's amazing to see how bad people are working the striking pads. So. Oh, All right, so let me get my water. You guys get to watch a little fighting while we're uh, doing a little bit of talk about um, about probing with a sword or fakes with a sword. So here's what I'm gonna say about, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about fakes. We do a lot of fakes. There's a lot of different ways. We talked a lot about footwork fakes, you know, even that switch. Is a fake. It's it's drawing your opponent's attention, uh, attention and mind to something else. It could even increase increase their tension in their body because you're applying the difference between my shoulder back here and throwing and my hip here and throwing is significantly different. So it changes that range. They have it's done so fast with your feet. They have to make quick decisions on what's happening. So you know the the idea is that we have that. We have what is essentially talks about a really just quick body tension fakes. And those are, I don't actually have to move. What I'm doing is I can be totally relaxed and then I can tension my body for just a second. That will many times draw your opponent into tensioning because what they're doing is watching your body and looking for something to happen. Now, neither of these have changed or made them feel like you well, have been in a place where you can hit them with something because we haven't moved our sword yet. So even, even in that scenario where I do a, a, a foot switch, hey, my sword didn't move. 
So if they tend to watch the sword a lot, or to tell you the truth, if they tend to be, <laughs> if they wear glasses and they can't just see it, they may not see body fakes. They may not see tension fakes in your body. Um, so they have to make them larger, uh, you know, so that they can see them sometimes. Uh, you know, that, that, that switch, quick switch may be instead, if you do that quick switch forward, where you take that back foot and switch while you're falling forward, that brings you to a line of sight for them, which also gets you to that point where now you change range and feet at the same time. Now your opponent can see you and has to react. But again, that's a movement fake. The, the next piece is that quick tension fake. There's a couple ways to do tension without doing your sword again. Here I am, you know, and I'll give it a nice close up here. Here I am. And I essentially just almost like I lift my feet. And I'm going to show how this works later. And I just drop a little and I breathe out, let that air out. And you can let it out slowly, but you notice my sword may change height a little bit. And if that doesn't change, if my body changes height, my sword doesn't necessarily change height. Because now I can still throw high. That same type of fake occurs on a fake leg shot. Here I am. I could literally just drop my body. Hey, hey. I drop my body. Hey. Make it look like a lay. I'm going low because I'm, they drop that and then I pop back up and throw a head shot. Again, we're now we're using just body fakes. We're not moving our feet, but we're using body fakes so that your opponents have to think about what you're doing. Again, you notice that we're not talking about throwing it. If what we find is we are so focused on throwing constantly. Hey, Dan. He's over there talking. We are so focused on throwing constantly that we lose the, we, we take our own ability away to build a fight because we're like, Okay, I gotta throw something. No, you don't. There's no shot clock. We, we, we're not in a place where it's like, hey, I gotta throw something. It's absolutely not it. Or we're not also not in a place where, hey, I could hit that and you just throw it. Well, you don't even know if you could hit it yet. What you wanna do is try to make sure you can hit it. The more you raise your odds that you're gonna hit something, the less you take a chance at being hit while you're doing offense. So if I'm constantly throwing, bang, and this guy's timing, he rips my arm off. But I didn't know. Now, if I fake this throw, hey, and now the, here's a case where I start turning my sword a little. I don't turn a lot. I fake that throw a little harder. And I can see that his sword starts up for a throw. I'm going to be like, oh, that guy's going to counter shoot something. Well, am I going to do that now? Maybe not, because I just learned that he might rip my arm off. But if I never took the time to figure that out, then you're fundamentally, you, it's an opportunity to get hit. And, and that's the idea is we're trying to take out all the opportunities to be hit. So that's, that's where we are in this. And that's where we're talking about fakes. So again, we went from feet to body fakes. Uh, there's another layer of fake, uh, Musashi talks about it. And it's actually your breath or voice or sound. Um, and, and, and Musashi talks about the three layer, three different places you can make sound and do stuff. At the beginning, before you throw a blow, hey! and then throw, that voice essentially transmits what shocks your opponent or makes them think, and then you throw in, right after it. There's the voice when you throw at the same time. Hey! The idea there is I'm throwing and striking at the same time. That voice allows you to blow all that energy out of, take tension out of your body by relieving that breath from your body and deliver all that force into your opponent. I'm gonna add one little comment. The first, the before voice also adds tension to your opponent. Yeah, that's right, exactly. All right, so, and that's and that's 100%. I, I use that before voice. Sometimes I use it in melee all the time. Not even hitting somebody, I'll run around the edge and go, hey, 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 hey. And I, now they look at me. Well, guess what else they're not looking at? Did I throw a blow? No. And I'm winning that fight because I'm, they're like, what, 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 what? <laughs> you know? Uh, so that, that becomes, you know, that idea of the before voice, as uh, Louis says, that's how Musashi talks about it. 
Um, and then there's the voice after. And I find this one the most interesting because sometimes I, um, <laughs> I tell people that they have to watch, uh, this especially for Florentine, you throw a bunch of blows, bang, 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 bang. You might have hit with the first one. Your opponent thinks, oh, he hit me, and then he has to block three or four more shots. Well, guess what? Now, well, that must not have been a good hit if he kept going. That's what they think. So sometimes the idea is like, bang, hey, you know, and then give them time. You don't need, you know, the voice at the end, the hey at the end after I throw is to wake them up. Get them thinking, and then you give them a chance to think about it, fall back into that, that gray range and work them. Allow them to think about that blow a little bit. If, if you believe it was, doesn't matter if it was good or not. If it's bad, you say, no, don't take that. That was terrible. But if, if it's something that's on the edge, you can just let them think. If they don't take it, no big deal. You're in the gray zone. You're still in the attention zone, but you're giving them time to think. By the way, what are they doing? They're thinking, which is clouding their brain, which is right back to what we talked about for last week. So, so that's how we're, that's how that post voice works, but it doesn't have to be a voice. Sometimes you, you're fighting and Angus, you had this, I think I even called you out on this one. You were fighting at crown, you are bang, bang, bang. And then, and you hit him with the first one. You could see that there was probably some point that that, that person could have thought about it, but you didn't give them time. And so they went back into the fight again. They're like, oh, okay, must not be good. I'll just keep going. I don't have to think about that anymore. But when you give them chances to think about it, it becomes more difficult. So, and as long as you're not disengaging big or anything, you're falling into that neutral zone, you can still keep an edge of pressure on while they're thinking. And, and that now you're breaking them down mentally in that space. And that's where you're gonna take some more advantages. But you have to sometimes in our sport, you, and Musashi was the same way. He was beating people down with a wooden Vulcan. And at some point they knew they were defeated, but you have to give them room to admit they're defeated. Sometimes they won't admit they're defeated. I fought people like this. So I'll hit them over and over again and I'll just smile. It's like bang and I'll smile, you know? And then and, and be in that zone, I'd be, you know, and, and they're like, what do you think? I go, don't take it. And, and then we're still fighting. They don't care. I don't care because I know at this point I'm setting up house in their head. Because now the expectation is, okay, he touched me once, he's gonna, he can touch me again. I have to go defensive. That's great. You go defensive, I'm going to hit you because it's easier to hit you in defense and offense. Oh, you know, and, and the reason why that is is because I'm safer because he's not thinking about fighting me. He's thinking about bringing defense to himself. He's not externalizing that fight. Masashi talks about that all the time. You should, you're always there killing your opponent. They talk about it in German longsword. Every, every blow is a block and it's a strike with a block through that, that, that line that you're striking it. But the idea, the real fundamental idea is that you're always killing your opponent. And that's what you have in your mind. Defense is all part of that. But you remember defense is a technique. That's something that you can do 10,000 times and then you have to trust yourself it's gonna be right. But you, I don't care, it's like, bang, you hit him. You, if you're sitting there thinking, why didn't he take that? Guess what? Now who's thinking? Now you're thinking. So he's winning. You see how they just turned that around on you? If you hit him once, you can hit him again. So bang, give him time to think about it. It's like, no big deal. I'm thinking about hitting you next time somewhere else. If he says, oh, no, that was good. I'm like, okay, thank you very much. Shake your hand, go up. So in, in that line, we went from, Probing with, probing with feet, probing with body, probing with voice. We added a couple layers on the voice route so that you knew all three layers of the voice. We added the understanding that sometimes you have to give your opponent time to think. In fact, oftentimes against a younger opponent, you want to make sure they're thinking because their natural ability is much faster than yours. They'll spike adrenaline faster. So, if you drive your opponent's energy, I'm gonna take that energy that I use with my body. Here we are. And I'm spiking this energy. Hey! Well, I can keep this going, but no matter how fast I've trained, that young guy who's, I'm not spiking my adrenaline, they are. And if they throw out of adrenaline, it's gonna be very fast and dangerous. 
So you have to be careful. You want to see how I fight somebody that's fast and dangerous? Here's what it looks like. I give them nothing. You take everything away so that they don't know how. They're relying on you to help them spike their energy. How many people you fight after you're done? They're like, that was the best fight ever. Oh my God. I want, I want that feeling every time. Well, is that the way you want to fight? And it's fun. And I know all the answers want to be yes. That's the way I want to fight everybody every time. But that's bullshit. You know how I want to fight people? I want to make them the worst fighter they can be for that moment. When I'm training them, I will make them the best fighter I can be for that moment. Just to show them that they do have it inside them. But when I'm in competition, do I want this guy to be the best fighter? Right? So just be careful. There's, you fall into two edges of thought here. And one is there's the entertainment of, of the crowd and so on. But there's also that entertainment of the crowd that are looking for you to win. So you know what's exciting? When you could take that guy who's super fast, calm him down and one shot them and they're like, holy crap, did he just one shot that guy? Right? Well, you didn't have to have a giant fight for people to go, holy shit, that guy's good. So your, your goal in tournament, you know, it's, you got to take a look at this. Would I have gone out and it's like, hey, the guy put one bullet in his gun and I got six. Well, hey, you should go back, put five more bullets in your gun. Hell no, I want to miss on the first one and then I'm going to win for sure, <laughs> right? So it doesn't have to be, you don't have to bring your opponent up to have it as a good fight. A good fight is actually making your, an understanding by making your opponent come down. Now we're using our brain. It's, it's not seen by many other people, but you know that if you go in there and you're like, ooh, this guy moves fast, he, he's super adrenalized, I'm gonna slow him down. And I'm, you're, you get in there and you're like, you put some tension and you take it away. And then you put some tension and you take it away. And you get to that point where they slow down because they're not sure what's going on. They don't know how to control their adrenaline. They're waiting for you to, you to burst or throw something. And now you're actually physically in control of somebody that may even be better than you. So now, what part of that is really good fighting? Is it just to have a great fight and maybe the guy beats you or the girl beats you? Or is it, I made them do something and I won? Or I made them do something and I lost. It doesn't matter. As long as you understood, you made them do something. You know, that's that small goal. You know, you don't have to win to win. The idea is if, if I'm fighting wrong baller and I make wrong baller essentially bend in half, I'm like, woohoo, I win, I'm done. Uh, you know, because I know I made him do something he doesn't want to do. So, Again, this is why we probe with feet, body, voice. And now the last piece, sorry, the long path to get there, but the hands. And actually we had a, a lot of trouble with the hands piece um, with side, and there's still some. What we see a lot is people want to, hey, here's my, here's my fake. Well, it's a fake, yes, but it also takes your sword way out of position. So at the time you throw this fake and then you get it back to throw something, the other person's back as well. So you have to make that fake smaller and more intense so your opponent believes it. I can throw a fake that's unbelievable. Dude, does it really look like I'm trying? That's not believable. Your opponent doesn't care. Your opponent can stand there and like, I'll throw that when they put some energy in it actually look like they're going to hit me. A fake should look like, and a fake could be that you throw the fake the first time and you're like, oh, I can totally hit that without a fake. And then you throw the exact same thing, but for the shot. So the fake and the shot should look almost identical. So if I'm going to throw an offside, my fake may look this way. Hey! You notice I just moved about that much, right? I didn't roll the top end. I just pushed his sword a little towards him. So now I'm gonna actually throw that and it's like, hey! Right, so now it's, it's, it's pushing through. 
Okay, I apologize. I can't. I don't have a pel. Plus, it's probably not great for my shoulder right now. Um, but the idea is I can push that all the way through now. So, but did you see? Here's the fake. Sword really doesn't. I drive the hand a little forward, but there's that much to recover. And I can actually push and fall into it and finish it if I want. There's all kinds of options there. But if I do this and I got to bring it back, then they're they're prepared already. If I just do this and I'm not putting any body, no drop, that drop creates like tension. They see like, all of this bursting energy gathering in you. What happens when you drop into the ground for something? You're building power from the ground. So it convinces them that you're ready to do something. What's gonna, you're gonna find here is that you can also add some air with your feet. And what I mean by there is I'm gonna hold my breath and throw this. So I'm holding my breath and throwing that. There's no sound, there's no breath. Sometimes I know that an opponent, there's not as much tension coming out. I'm gonna give it with sound and I'll show you without sound, but still breath. Hey! All that breath came out. And that created uh, all my energy, just like dropping into the ground. They know that energy is coming out towards them. If I hold my breath, it looks like this. Anybody hold their breath and throw shots? Is, is that feel great? Probably not. You're, you're holding back. You're actually holding tension in your body, which holds back your shots. So let that air. Boxers do this all times with jabs. And it doesn't have to be all your air. It could be just partial. It could be literally like, hey, hey, hey. And it could be part, little, little bursts of air. Boxers do this all the time with their jabs. Hey, 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 hey. Right? And what happens in that is that at the end, when they really want to do something or they want to power up, then they can release the rest of their air. For me, I don't tend to do that quite as much. I do it a little bit. I'll let air out, but I actually, on the return, on the relaxation, I'm like, hey, I'm actually breathing back in just a little bit as well. If I'm breathing really hard in a fight, like, ha, all that bad air comes out. All that stuff you've been holding in your lungs is completely empty. I can bring all good oxygen back into me and I can start breathing. So what we're trying to do here is is make sure that your body is fueled to throw a shot again. So I could be, you know, we're working this, you know, Vim, I've been watching your videos, lots of footwork. I'm sure everybody's like, hey, you're moving too much. You're wearing yourself out, right? And it's like, I am not wearing myself out because this is the job. I'm ready for a hundred mile marathon. I've been doing this for a while. I got my three minute rounds in. Do you, because I can keep going, right? And that's what we're talking about is we're talking about, I'm gonna, sometimes I'll bring it up and then I'm gonna relax, I'm gonna slow it down, I'm gonna control my heartbeat, I'm gonna breathe, I'm gonna still do a little jerks and then I'll bring it, bring it up again, right? And then if I get a little tired again, I'm gonna slow it down and I'm pushing to the corners and I'm breathing on these. And literally I'm talking through this because while I'm talking, I'm bringing breath back in and forth. I'm comfortable. You notice I can do this while I talk because the, the idea is I'm not focusing on my movement, focusing on breathing through it. It's like running. If I'm running and I'm just like constantly thinking about how out of breath I am, what happens? You break down. But if I'm running and I'm thinking, you know, it got that really clear mind and I'm thinking about controlling my heart rate and, and, and just breathing in and breathing out in that meditative state, then next thing you know, you're, you're miles down the road. So we're gonna go back to fakes and I'm gonna watch. What I'd like you to do, go ahead. I, you're taking a dog for a walk, so go ahead and do it, uh, it's best. I'll go through these again. All right. So what I'd like to do, and I'm gonna start everybody best. If you know how to go and, and bring the dog out and bring it back in, okay. So the idea is I want everybody to get in front of the pill if you have your camera around, just leave it. You don't even have to throw a shot. And what I want to do is, the idea is to put tension um, into that body. Here we are. Hey! I just want you to breathe out and just literally drop into your, your balls of your feet. 
Okay. So let me see what that looks like for you. Hold on. Gonna switch to Vim real quick here. All right, best move your camera a little so I can see you in front of your pal. And again, we're not worried. Good, you look good. I, I won't scream because my kids are sleeping and I had to come inside because it's raining, but I will breathe hard. Oh, no problem, just breathe. So remember, again, on that Vim, there we go. You don't need to step. I want you to literally just drop, like lift your feet, both feet. Yeah, like you're almost falling into it. I right? like a little jump. You don't lean forward. Watch that back and the hips. Yep, you should be dropping your butt straight to the ground. There, right there. That's it, Vim. Yes, yeah. Now I want you to put a little more tension in that hand. Yes. Yes. Now I want you to go ahead and make sure they're aware of the top of the sword as well. The top of the sword is what hits them. So you, there you go. Like that top of it is ready to throw, isn't it? You should feel like you could literally do it. That's the idea. Uh, look in the front of that bag. I usually carry boxing wraps in the two pouches in the front of that, my helmet bag. That's the way. Now, drop into your butt. You're leaning forward on those. Okay, I'm going to show, I'm going to go back to me and I'm going to show it and then we're going to move off to, to Angus for a sec. Um, but I'm going to go back to me real quick first. Is this me? All right, this is me. Here we are. Watch, watch my feet here. So what I see you doing a little bit, and I'm going to do it sideways, is you're doing this. So you're dropping this out. See my back change? Watch this now. Right? So what's happening is I'm not bending here. I'm dropping straight down. This, this, it's almost like you're taking a, a perfectly thing and dropping it straight down like this. Not this way, but this way. Does that make sense? That's the way. So best, I really love that. Now I want you to do a tiny bit one. So in other words, don't throw it. Don't throw it. That's too far. All right, I'm gonna go to Todd for a sec, or Angus, and, but I'm gonna talk to you, Bess, in it for a second here. So, Bess, I, I don't want you to hit the Pell at all. I want you to make that Pell feel like you're gonna hit it. Now, smaller. There you go. Now, so Angus, I'm gonna go back to you in a minute, Bess. Angus, what I see is that you're holding your hand pretty far out. I want to collapse that hand a little bit in more in line with your shoulder. And it might just be the angle. Um, turn directly at, yeah, turn, yeah, okay. Not bad, you're still a little bit outside your shoulder. So the idea is here I am. There you go, good, good, that's, what I, that's much better, good, okay. Now, don't turn so much. You're, so you're thinking in, in, in what you're doing here is you're thinking almost everything about your hand being the fake. I want you okay. to think about the whole sword, the top of the sword being the fake. What are you gonna hit with the top of that sword? Yeah, that's better. You notice now you're still in line to throw something, aren't you? Yep. That's better. See, yeah, before you're wiggling the basket. Yeah, I've been practicing getting to this shot, you know, basket going forward first. Right. So, so now you notice the blade and the basket are going forward yep. and you're not dragging it. And I'm going to show what I mean by that to, for everybody here. And this, this is a good drill for everybody, I think, because I think we're, we're pinpointing some, some things here. So what I see in some of this is what happens is watch what my sword does. I'm going to fake. You see how my sword, I faked with this basket, but you see where my sword is? Is it threatening anyone? Not yet. In fact, what I did is I put this over my head. Now it's loopy. So I actually broke my throw because I actually made the throw longer. But if I do this, hey, you notice I'm literally driving everything. I'm thinking about hitting with this part of the sword. That's the part I'm driving towards my opponent. It's much more convincing. Yes. You get what I'm talking about here? 
All right, I want everybody to do it again. Bess, I'm watching. Ah, Bess, that is so much better. Heck yeah. Nice, Bess. Now watch it, that's the way. Okay, uh, Germanicus, I'm gonna replace and get you. There you go. That's it. Now, yes. Now, I, re I want some really thriving, like, believable tension in your body, Germanicus. Like, let that air out. Ha! Yes, exactly. And you notice how easy it is to return back to your defense, isn't it? So what I want you to do, Germanicus, I want you to switch from one hand to the other hand, but don't, don't get it too quick. I want perfect in each hand. There you go. There you go, that's the way. All right, back to you, Vim. Now, Bess, I want you to go ahead and throw a real throw on that. You throw a fake and then a throw. All right. I can't hit the pellets. It's really upsetting the dogs. I just had to give them treats. Oh, no problem. Them. Okay. Then, then really good tension on those fakes. All right. I'm going to go back to Vim for a sec. There we are. Good. Good. Now, Vim, make it look like an offside. Push that sword just about one inch like you're going to throw the offside and then bring it back. Too much, too much, too much. Yeah, right there. Yes. You see how fast it returns? There you go. You notice you're hardly moving it, doesn't it? So this time, th throw it. This time, go ahead, throw it. There you go. Good. That's the way you see. See, it's the same technique, isn't it? Yeah. So the more they think it's the same technique, the more they have to trust and believe it. Otherwise, you're just going to hit them with the technique. Okay? So this is what makes a fake so important. Every layer that you make somebody believe is a layer that's harder for them to, there you go, good, yes. And sometimes it's drop, you know, dropping into that body, right? Yes. And, and the good part is saying, yes, the thing I really like you doing here is that you're not dropping sideways into something, right? I see a lot of people throw fakes and they drop sideways into it. And that is not what you want to do. You want to drop into that whole body. You want to drop straight. So you still have opportunity to throw either side. Yeah, and I'm looking at like the, the fake toward the leg is just a little bit, yes, you know, yes. it's going to go here just a little bit more down. Exactly. And, and most of that fake to the leg is literally you're just bending those legs, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, my sword really hasn't moved any. No. And in fact, your sword is always still back into that block, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Actually, so, I've gotten again, into a better block because I'm a little bit closer to blocking the legs with it then. Exactly. Now you're being, you're falling into, and even when you push it forward, you're in a better block because you're cutting angles. All right, so this is why these fakes are so important. The, the, the big piece on these, I'm gonna pop back to me in a second here. And I know that right now, a lot of you can't do this um, uh, just because of either animals or kids. Um, but the, the idea is we don't have to think about the, the yell, but think about the breath, exhaling, because that makes your opponent believe it even more. It's like, I'm gonna throw that fake. Hey! Just allowing that air comes out will make your opponent see more tension. By holding it, I'm holding everything in. And my opponent can feel that. Remember, a lot of this fight becomes very emotional. And, 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 and we feel the other person and how they feel. That's our connection we're making to evaluate how to fight. So breath is part of that overall connection that you're making. Really good martial arts. I used to watch for when people were on their way to breathe out. They'd be like, and then I'd throw and make them suck that bad air right back in. Right? Because now what happens is I'm breaking their system down because they can't get the, the bad air out of their system. So there's less oxygen and more bad air in their lungs because they have to suck it back in. All right? Good martial arts it can actually see those places. Later on, you don't, it's a little bit of gimmicky at first. Later on, you just see those places where somebody's like, you can see they're tired. 
So, and they start breathing hard. So then you, all of a sudden, every time they want to breathe, you're like back, all of a sudden you're just, your back's like, hey, hey, hey. And then, and they're just holding their breath because you, you can tell when they're trying to breathe out. Now you're take, stealing that breath from them. All right. There's also, there's Musashi talks about waiting for somebody to blink. No, I'm not watching their eyes back. So literally <laughs> you wait till they're like, they're blinking and that's when you throw. Um, and, uh, you know, again, that falls back. It's like, you don't want to be staring at something because then you're, they can use eye fakes and things like that. But the idea is you're finding that time when they're in the point where they have to do something else. If that's breathe, blink, readjust, that's when you're taking your advantage or you're trying to make it, break it down for them. It's hard to get there. That's a, that practice for a long time. But what we have to do first is we have to have good fakes. Because if we don't have good fakes, we can't have good probes. And, and the probing is the biggest piece because what I've been seeing, and, and Vim, you, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, is like, I want you to go out there and not throw a blow first, right? I want you to throw some fakes and not throw blows. And, you know, it's hard to do because what are you used to doing, Vim? Throwing. Exactly. No. So now we, we took that away from you, didn't we? So now your opponents, how did your opponents feel when you didn't throw? Uh, usually they get a little confused. Ah, not, because they're you. Yeah. They, you're not doing what you normally do, right? And actually, Bronis uh, Muzashi says that as well. Once your opponents yes, know what you do, you break, you break the pattern. Exactly. So that's what this does. And it also adds a place where you can add consistency to your fight. The more I know what my opponent does, the more consistent my fight's wins can be. People ask all the time, it's like, you know, do you think you're a great fighter? I think there's a lot better, faster fighters than me. I think I'm consistent at the level I'm at. I'd rather make every one of you consistent I'd rather see you go to crown and, and finish in the finals 10 times in a row than win crown once and never go to the finals again. Because which guy is the better fighter or girl? Which, which guy or girl is the better fighter? The one that goes to crown, finishes fine in, in the top 10 times in a row or the one that happens to get to the finals and wins? I, I know which one I would pick. The one that's there exactly. constantly. And that's that consistency, right? You know, I, I see a lot of that. It's like, oh my God, they must be great. They won crown. I'm like, uh, yeah, all eight, of the, all eight of those people that were in crown. Yeah, it was, I'm, I'm sure it was very difficult, right? It depends who those eight people are. Yeah, and it does depend on who those eight people are, but you know, are, the hardest you've ever been are, are the best people usually in crown? <laughs> Not necessarily. I, Ron Valder hasn't fought for years. I haven't fought for years. Uh, you know, you look at your know, dog fights quite often, but Edmund is on and off. Uh, and then you, you even get into the, 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 the guys that are up and coming. Uh, they don't fight constantly. Kellick doesn't fight constantly, you know, because, well, you know, they've done it. They don't want to be crowned again right away. Remind me, I have one to run past you later. Okay. And, you know, so, so maybe they're not fighting that. Now, if you go into a tournament like a candle mass or some large tournament, Lots of times all those people come out. Now you have to burn through. But even in something like that, you may not run across those people. Somebody funny with two stick might take Kellick out early. And then the two stick gets taken out by Joe Blow with a lucky flood, a, a shot because their defense is, is, you know, no matter what, two sticks defense is tough sometimes. You get hit with a lucky shot. There's a lot of luck in tournaments. Yeah. And, and then the next thing you know, you're fighting a guy that he killed probably the second best guy with a lucky shot, and then you're, you're fighting them. So are you getting the best fights? Maybe not. So the, the idea of knowing when you're good is by having that base. And then we're working. I don't care how great you can spike to. I care that your base just keeps going up. Because then you just keep, anytime you spike, it's that much better. And I, I know, you know, you can see more. But the good part is you're not going to fall off the rat. You know, you're not going to fall all the way back down to the bottom. You're, like, you're not going to make stupid mistakes that keep you down there. So my goal when we train is to keep your base, get that consistency. Going. And that's where we are. 
So are we in a rush to throw a shot? As Alan Nan says, I, 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 he looks around, he's like, uh, I don't see that 30 second clock anywhere. So I, I don't think I need to throw, right? And, you know, we, we talk about people that throw multiple combinations. Combinations are big. Some kingdoms, you have to know combinations get knighted. And, and I go out to those kingdoms. You want to see my three-point combination is this. Here we are. That was my three. Here I went. Fake here, dropped to that leg, came back off the side. There's my three-point combination. Did I have to throw all three? Not really. So why? Why bother? Because if I throw all three, somebody might catch me in one of those three. Especially if I throw all three and don't really mean the first two. And then we fall back into that mental game where if I throw this shot and then I see them raise their shield. So guess what? I'm building my second layer of combination. I'm gonna fake this shot and drop down to that leg. Now, if they immediately drop their shield, I'm like, oh, now I'm gonna go ahead and I got three points, right? I'm just working myself through the chess match that what we call fight. If I fake that first shot, bang! And then they throw that offside and I catch it with my sword. I'm like, woo! If I would have thrown that, where would their offside have been? On my head. I may have got a double kill. Is that good? Absolutely not. If I shoot you with a gun and you shoot me with a gun, is that good? Absolutely not. The idea is that you don't want to get hit. And that's why you got to keep in mind, you do not want to get hit. Yeah, we got throwing weapons now. <laughs> so, so that's why we need to take, we, we've been working on feet and we've been working on body and, and tension. Now we have to take it to the next level and try to convince others that you're throwing a blow without throwing a blow. And that's where our sword fakes come in. And, and this is where, again, I go to practice or I'm doing pickup at an event. Do I have to beat that other person? Absolutely not. It's nice. And maybe there are times when you do. You're, there are times you go out and pick up. It's like, I got to give them some good stuff because they, uh, they kind of gave me good stuff last time and I don't want to lose this time. I'm, I'm fine with that. You bet, other people, you're like, I got time to work on some stuff. Vim was in the backyard to fight practice. Fighting, uh, some people had some really nice sword blows and movement. I was really impressed with uh, the first guy's uh, movement that you worked on. And, and he was, that person was very fast and did a counter throw that cutting arm shot a lot. So now you fake and they cut that counter arm and now you got, well, can I hit the arm as he's throwing now? You know, can I hit it after he throws on the way back maybe? Because I didn't give him my arm and I sort of still in throwing position. Or I throw it a number of times, he quits throwing the counter arm, then you throw it. So now you just made de defensively, you essentially used probing as a defense. Sometimes offense is defense. I could be here and I'm fighting and I could see that they're getting ready to throw a blow and I go, hey! And then all of a sudden, what are they like? Oh, well, I just, I just stopped the blow being thrown at me. Congratulations. That's a perfect defense. I had to do nothing. Okay, so, so that's uh, you know, another way to think about what a good fake with a sword can do. Yes, as Beth said, I forestalled them. And it's exactly, right? That's exactly, and she brings that up because we had a good conversation about Musashi on, on Coach's Corner on Friday. And, and she hates Musashi, but now she's a fan. <laughs> uh, so but that exactly isn't it interesting how all of these feed into the things he talks about so the the idea there is we're using these things to build a fight we don't rush to a fight there is nothing wrong with having a 5 10 15 minute fight and both of you could be like pushing and tension throw a shot that's I'll throw shots, even in, in, a, in a fight, I'll throw a shot safe, that's safe defensively for me, that I don't maybe know he, 
that's probably not going to hit them. Sometimes I throw it to make sure they know the power, right? And Musashi talks about this as well. But that they know the power on that shot. Power delivered sometimes can shock people as well. So if they all of a sudden you, you throw something really fast, then they're like, oh, shit. It's right into their sword. It doesn't matter. But they still have to think about that shot going somewhere else. So it, it becomes important. And that's why fakes, quick shots, a big powerful shot on a shield. They're like, whoa, what the hell was that noise? I don't want to get hit with that. Right? All of those things build into a fight, build into breaking somebody's fight down. And that's what we're talking. So, so we're here. You guys can see those now. So I want everybody, we're, they primarily worked on one fake. So if it was them, you worked a lot on that offside fake. Now I want you to work on the onside fake. If you worked on the onside, I want you to work on the offside fake. Because what happens is each one of those is different, just like your actual throw. So your fake should look just like your throw. If I'm here and this is my offside fake, my onside fake might be here. Look, all I did is I changed it about that much. I could finish this if I want. I don't do this because now I'm too far. I'm literally, I drop this in. Hey! In this position right here, if you look, my tip doesn't actually move that much. My hand does. You see how the tip is staying almost in place? Because I can still, hey, bam! I can still throw an offside, even though I'm flowing to the onside. Mm. If I go too far, hey, can I throw an offside? It's over my head again. Look at this. Now the offside's gone. So that's why it's so important to think about the top of your sword. What part of the sword do you hit your opponent with? The top of the sword. That is where your fake comes from. All right. I want to see some. This time you're faking on the other side. Angus, you're our first up. So you're, you're pulling back first, Angus. You see that? So, so I want I want you to just think top of the sword forward right away. Just drop into that front leg. There you go. Now it's not so big. There you go. There. Yes. Yes. So I talk about you. That's hard not to do the one to pull that back, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah, you do. There you go. Now think about dropping into both feet instead of just the front foot. There. Good. That's much you see. Do you feel that? Yes. Yeah, because I can I can feel the first ones I can only go here. Now I can feel I can go here if I needed to. Exactly. You could go either side, couldn't you? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Good. Watch your hands floating. You're floating away from your body a little bit. Okay. Get that hand back down and in front of that shoulder a little more. See how wide your guard is on your back. I want you to touch in between every block. I want you to touch your buckler with your basket. Yep. Now touch it again. Get a little closer. Too big. A little closer. I want I want the width of two baskets between your right there. Nice. Oh, see that? Yeah, that's only about two inches apart. Yes. You see how much smaller that is now? Yeah. yeah think about man, climbing forward. You you throw a blow that's we in the past we and we've been working on this. You know, you talk about moving the tip around. That's that's a very typical SCA. So I know. Yes. I'm working on not. I'm working on punching from the shoulder with the tip moving at the last possible moment, but it goes against everything I've learned for like thirty years. It's very yeah, so, so be careful. Yeah. So Bess, did you say your tip is moving at the end? Or when I'm, you say moving, is it traveling forward and not moving side to side? So my hand, I'm trying to make, okay, in the one practice I've been back since, you know, my shoulder, I bring my hand forward, like right punching forward. Yes. And then at the last minute. Um, yes. And that's contrary to what I've learned. Yes, it is 100%. Thank no, God. Yeah. Speaking of Musashi, 
everything is difficult at first. <laughs> you know, you should think about this teaching. well. <laughs> the blow that you've been teaching, Brianus, where it goes forward? Yes. It, do you like what so I've been trying to work on? Which is so really in difficult that place, after so many years of doing it the other way. I, it really is, 100%. So just think about Think about moving the thing forward that hits your opponent. In other words, the thing that's moving forward is the top of your sword and move both the top and bottom together. Exactly. You haven't even committed to where you're going to hit yet. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And say, now I want you to breathe out on those. Isn't that annoying? <laughs> So Tell now don't, out. don't, just, don't I'm not vocal with it. So don't pull your, now you, again, you look how far away your basket is from your edge of your shield. There we go. Tighten that back up again. Good. There. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. It's floating out again. There. Good. I am going to tell you when I fight, a lot of times I'm going to show you what I do. Vim, I'm going to come to you next after this, but I'm going to show you what I do when I fight. And just to make sure, because this is something we talk about constantly. If I have a sword and shield, here it is. This is where my hand is. Bang, I bring it right back. Every time I come back, I could be here. I'll come back, I'll touch it. Just to remind myself where my sword is supposed to be. Always go back into your base. Remember, we talked about your, what is your base? Know your base. Always go back to your base. All right, Vim, I'm going to be on you here. All right, Vim, I want you to be a little careful. So I want you, well, and this could be the angle. So I'm looking up angles from your camera probably, but I want to, I want you to turn sideways when you get to that pell. I want to see where your sword's sitting. Yep. There we go. Good. Your tip is in front of your head. That's all I wanted to make sure of. So remember, if, if we, there we go. Good. And the reason why I wanted to point this out to everybody is if, if that hand, if your tip is over your head, your forearm is exposed. The farther your sword is out sometimes, the less, there you go. Now look how your forearm's not exposed anymore, is it? Mm -hmm. So that's the thing to remember. And this is the thing to look for on other people. There you go, good. Now, Tim, I want you to drop and push, push that sword a little bit forward while you drop. Oh, the whole sword, tip and all. You see, now you're ready, almost like you're ready now it's coming at them. Do you see the difference? The other way, you're holding it in your body. Now you're extending it. It makes it more dangerous for your opponent. And really, you're just extending your block forward, aren't you? And you can throw from there. The idea? Yes. That makes uh, a huge difference. That's what I wanted to see. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Back to you, Germanicus. I want to see... Your other side now. Well, you go. You've been doing your other side, so I want to. I want to see. Okay, I don't, there we go. Now I want you to extend. You tend to hold really tight into your body with those hands. I want you to extend. Turn sideways. Can you? Yes. There we go. Good. Now, yes. Move that there. Thank you very much. Okay. Now let me see. That's it. So the good part about throwing down the center like that, Germanicus, is that you're throwing across their throwing zone aren't you now you're only flicking the top of the sword i want the whole thing to be more dramatic in other words leave sometimes you do it too fast i want you to slow that down a little bit and make them believe so breathe out it's like <laughs> there now your tip of your sword's going a little forward just think about pushing the sword and the stick out at the same time don't drop the tip so much slower slower do it Really, as slow as you can. There, now, yes. You notice that that sword stays essentially vertical, doesn't it? 
And now you could literally change it with changing the direction of your hand, can't you? But if you start dropping your tip too early, then what happens is you have to recover. Does that, you see how you're flicking the tip forward? There we go, That's, that arm's even better. You see how you're not flicking the tip forward there? Because as soon as you flick that tip forward, what do you have to do? You gotta bring that sword back, don't you? You see where I'm coming from, Germanicus? There we go. Good. Now I want one big fake without flicking the sword for it. I just want you to huh, drop into the stance. There, and then next one will be a throw. Good. Good. And you notice now what's happening is in between those, you're looking for what's open, aren't you? Because that's what you should be. This fake is made so that you're learning your opponent and what their weakness is. So there's going to be some time, Germanicus, where you're going to go to a practice and you're going to be like, I normally beat this person. This time, I'm going to work on hitting him with one shot. In other words, I'm going to fake whenever the one shot I really throw should be the one that hits them. Does that make sense? Because if, and, and take it as every time you throw a shot and they block is like, I didn't do it right. I got to try it. I, I've got to do it better. I got to do my probes better. Does that make sense too? So, so the idea is, and it's, don't take it as in you lost. Just say, I can do it. I, I got to do it right. I got to manipulate this person to the next level. There we go. Now I want you to imagine your opponent and what they usually do when your hand starts going forward. Think about the hand you're using. Think about what hand they are. There we go. So, so the idea is if, if you're throwing that hand and I'm right-handed, I'm gonna throw over. What's up, Nessa? Let me go to my, uh, Nessa just said something in uh, comments here, hold on. Anyone care to guess what could have been an email? Oh, wait a second. Sorry if I get this right, the shot is still following the center line. Yeah, well, it could be following the center line, um, but it, could, it should be following essentially what your normal shot dynamic is. So if you're throwing an offside, it's just straight on that offside, right? You, you don't always just drop in the center line. Although, as long as you're traveling those same angles, that's a key. If you want to make it a little harder for your opponent, dropping to that sword to the center line allows you to throw either side. And it makes, your, makes it really difficult for your opponent to figure out which side you're going to throw. And for so two swords, it's my main vulnerability. Right. So I'm going to show you what the center line looks like. And, and, what, uh, and that, that was actually a really good question, Nessa. So here I am. I'm going to throw what I want them to believe is an offside. My hand is pushing across the center line, but I don't change this angle too much yet. Right now, I'm just driving the sword. And if you look this, I'm just driving that sword about there. Again, you notice the tip in the basket travels the same way. If I'm going to throw an offside, and I want them to think offside, but to throw an offside, they know that that sword has to start coming around. So all I do is I bring this hand. Now, the top of the sword doesn't change much, but the hand has the majority of change. The good part is as I push this forward, I can still throw that offside because I'm still, this is what that looks like. I'm here, this is in front of me, that, that center line which Nessa just mentioned. And now I can throw here, or I can throw here, right? So, and the good part is you're covering your center line. The weakness there is your outside lines. The good part about outside lines is when you throw this shot, and here's, here's the key, if I own the inside line, I own range. I can throw a longer shot because the fastest shot is the straightest line. If they have to go around, that's a shorter shot. I don't necessarily want to throw an inside shot when a guy is on top of me, unless I know that I can basket, you know, essentially short stick. 
So I don't want to necessarily throw that there. But when I'm way far away, I know his rotational shots can't hit me. I just lean in a bang, and then I lean back out. Because they, those rotational shots are shorter because they are not a direct line. Now, so I hope that kind of covered that a little bit. That you must research, you must research this deeply. <laughs> I love it. You guys are all gonna be Masashi fans after this is done. I'm blaming it on Bess. She shoved Masashi down our throat. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. I thought so, it was a good episode last night or on Friday night. Uh, good. I'm happy to hear that. It was, you know, it was about the fastest episode I've ever been on. I swear to God, I looked and I'm like, oh, we should have more time. We made it through like four things. Oh, coaches? Yeah. Oh my God. I looked at him like, we got 15 minutes. Left. What the hell? Ask this was, episode, I, and I watch the time on these episodes, like, religiously. I didn't even comment. I was too busy listening. I did. It was crazy. So, so, you guys are getting a little bit of Masashi, you know, Masashi today. Really, what you're getting is an understanding. And, and the best part is all of you have gotten to that point where understanding is much better. Um, so, I, I really, you know, you guys are starting to take emotion out of fights. You're starting to think about stuff. Hey, you. And it's good to see you. Um. And you're in that place now where you can start thinking about the fight in a different way. And I think this is where we are. Uh, as, as Best puts this, is the woo-woo stuff. But, you know, it's, you know, in a way, I, I talk about that all the time. But if I were just to come to you a year or two ago and say, say all the same shit, you guys would be like, what the hell is he talking about? Because you didn't have the other things in place. We are at that point where you have these things in place and I'm trying to expand the way you think about a fight now because that will open a whole new door to what you can be and what you can do to your opponent. I hope, I hope everybody's seeing that a little bit. All right, the last fake I'm going to show and then we're, we're just going to turn the cameras on that you guys watch is, is a leg fake, all right? Because a leg fake is really, really important. So we've already done, whoops, sorry, <laughs> wrong one, replace. So we've already done a leg fake a little bit uh, with Angus and what he did is he just dropped a little bit. You know, he's, he's here and he drops a little bit. So that's fundamentally a leg fake. There's a couple ways to do this. If I really wanna go to the head, all I'm gonna do is I'm, look at this, look up where my basket stays. The basket hardly moves. So it's independent of me. So I'm like, hey, bang. Because if I bring this with me, hey, my sword has to come back up to go. I lose time. All right. The good part about here, I'm already breaking high with my basket. It comes much faster. Then this would be a very good one for you. The one thing I would say is you don't throw enough leg shots. Okay. The leg okay. shots you threw on that first night, you sent stuff to me. Two out of three hit, and you only threw three. All right? So, so in his sword and shield, he has a small shield. He was hanging it up because he didn't worry about his leg. You weren't, you weren't working every corner of the box, were you? So yeah. that's, that's what we have. To, that's where we have to be. So now we can work the corners of the box without throwing. So here we are. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a really good leg fake. I'll bring the basket with me. All I'm doing is is a, about a three or two, three inch squat, right? This is why we do these squats. It's all we're doing is we're dropping a little bit. And when we drop, we can make it slower or fast. In other words, here I am, I just drop. I don't have to drop fast to make that pressure apply to a different area. If I drop fast, then I add tension to it. Hey! Now they have to drop faster. All right, so there's, there's multiple ways to do that. And in the last way, what happens is here I am, I could drop and like we said, here I drop and then I bring to the center line again. Hey, here I am in the center line. I can come back up and throw the offside head. Right, here I am to the center line. I can slide sideways, throw the inside leg. The big piece on that is here I am, watch my sword, here I am. Here I am, 
You notice again, that goes horizontal to the ground. It's not this. It's not a cutting blow down. All right, because based on range and how late it hits in it, it changes your angle. Also, where their shield is will take away that danger. So you have to watch that. So by, by being here, dropping, sliding. So that's the throw, but now he thinks that you, he sees that a couple times and all I have to do is go, okay. And I'm back, I'm back up, right? But all I have to do is, and in fact, I can do it super slow. Here I am, I'm fighting. I'm changing. Every time I change my height, now I'm using, right? We're using not only push and pull, but we're using a 3D effect of changing the point of the box you're targeting. So you change, and this is that piece, Vim. You stand very tall. Change that point up and down. All right, let's see a few of those and then we'll wrap it up. Exactly. Now, Vim, one thing I want you to do in those is I want you to raise that shield, leave the sword and shield almost in the same spot. Okay? Yes, now you just made a head block. See, your shield doesn't have to move, does it? You feel much more comfortable, don't you? Yep. Exactly. Very nice. Good. Does that make sense? It's, yes. it's very small, but that's a difference between being hit or not hit. Yes. See, that's that move little. When we talk about moving little, we talk about that shield and sword saying us, but your body's moving independently of those. Germanicus, I want to see you do this. I know you're going to struggle a little bit just because of your knees, but you can do this as well. Yeah, and you have a, you, you're learning to drop. Don't hunt your shoulders. You don't need to hunt. There you go. Good. So, so leave the swords forward. Like you're gonna push them forward a little bit and, and drop into your stance. So I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna go back to me and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'd like to see out of you. Um, let's get the right person this time or space spotlight. There we are. Uh, no, that is not the right one. This is the right one, the ladder. Sorry. All right, so here I am. I'm fighting two swords, right? So, so I'm a little bit out. You can see I'm a little bit out here. My blocks are in here. So this is a block. You notice this is a block. I can do it. I don't need to be way down if I don't want to, but this is a block, right? I just drop a little bit like you're learning. I can change my feet, doesn't matter. This is a block, right? But this can also be a fake. So I push these out and then all I do is lean back in, bang, bang. You see what happens? Here I am. Block. I'm pushing that block out because I'm cutting angles. Hey, bang. And then I slide right into those throws. And then I break off. So here we are again. Here I am. Bang, bang, bang. But that first one is a good push out fake. Yes, that's the way. Yeah, you notice now your range is changing, isn't it? Now fake, you can even fake with one. It doesn't matter. Yes. Yes. That is much better, Germanicus. Exactly. Yeah, he has, he has very nice footwork. So, you see what's happening with those swords now? You're adding a layer of depth to what your opponent has to think about. And guess what? What's really nice about this is you're not committing yet, right? So you don't have to throw. And in the West, what happens is they're just waiting for you to throw so they can start their throw. So your goal is going to be, I'm going to pull you into throwing constantly. In other words, I'm going to fake. I'm going to make you think we're fighting, but we're really not fighting. I'm just making you throw some blows and I'm going to block. And when you're done, I'm going to make you do it again. That makes sense? 
All right, good. All right. There we go, good. Yep, you see how it's all the same thing. You see how pushing forward changes a lot of it. And then you can fall right, then you just take that body, push that belt right into those swords after you push them out. Push them out as far as you can and then fall forward a little bit. Push that belly, yeah, not your head. That's it, just lean into it. There we go. Right, and then we have to be totally controlled why we're doing these things, because we're looking for the weaknesses in our opponent. We're not throwing. So make them think you're gonna throw that center line or you're gonna roll that top of the sword. Now think about making them think about that. There you go, good. So you could throw or you don't have to throw, but right now it's your choice. They don't know. Exactly. Very nice. Let's see, Bess, I'm gonna watch a little bit. No problem. Good. I love those drops, Bess. I'm going to tell you the best part in doing a good fake is making somebody respond. That's the win. I, I'll do something and they'll respond. I'll be like, oh, man, that was so nice. I just won. I didn't even hit them. You know, I just feel good because what I executed worked. I still took lots more of the fight to go, but that's the beginning of the fight is executing something that works. And then I just keep adding to it. Yeah. All right. All right, folks, we, uh, we had a good practice. Uh, it's about 3.20. I'm going to let you guys uh, uh, take a break, and I hope you guys enjoyed today. Uh, for everybody online, um, you know, I hope, uh, I hope you're getting something from this. There's a lot. Uh, I've, I've gotten a number of people that are like, oh, yeah, I watch all the time. And I'm like, never know, and it's always nice to hear. So uh, if you watch, just ping me. Uh, if you actually want to participate with us, let us know. Uh, and uh, I'm going to let the Facebook guys, uh, people go and, uh, and then we'll be here. We could chat a little bit and, uh, and then let go. All right. Stop it.